Hello there and welcome to one of AWS's foundational services, the Amazon Simple Storage Service, also known as S3. S3 is one of the most important topics for the exam and it is expected to feature quite heavily on the associate level exams. It includes lots of different concepts, features, settings and configurations. But let me assure you that it is not that difficult at all. And if you follow along with me, you will find this topic quite easy to understand and it will fetch you quite a lot of points on your exam. Let us see what we are going to cover in this S3 section over the next few videos. We will first start with few basic concepts to get our feet wet. Then we will see how the buckets are managed as they are at the heart of S3. We will take a look at how the access and permissions are managed via bucket policies and access control lists. We will explore the different storage classes available. We will then look at the different encryption options and how versioning is done in S3. We will study about the metadata, tag management, keys, and event notifications. We are also going to create a static website using S3. We will also cover the object lifecycle management, which is a very, very important topic for the exam. We will see some logging options along the way as well. Then we will take a look at some of the considerations for performance enhancement. We will then see what cross object resource sharing or cores is. It is important to know what the best practices are when it comes to data storage in S3. And finally, we will summarize what we learned in this whole section. Let us look at some of the main features and benefits of using S3. S3 is a highly durable service. In fact, it is designed to provide 99.999999999% of durability of the data. That's the service level agreement or SLA given by S3. It provides high availability of data. In fact, the data that is stored in S3 is automatically distributed across a minimum of three physical availability zones that are typically miles apart within a single AWS region. Hence, even if an entire availability zone becomes unavailable, your data is still available for you via the replicated copies. Since it is an AWS managed service, it provides you a very high scalability. It is an extremely reliable service and it provides you options for faster data access via multi-part upload, which we will see during our labs. It is the most cost effective data storage and archival service. It provides you different storage tiers that are available for different pricing options based on your need. It is a highly secure service and it provides you with different forms of encryption. It also offers sophisticated integration with AWS CloudTrail to log, monitor, and retain storage API call activities for auditing. It offers the most flexible set of storage management and administration capabilities. Storage administrators can classify, report, and visualize the data usage trends to reduce costs and improve service levels. Objects can be tagged with unique customizable metadata so customers can see and control storage consumption costs and security separately for each workload. It has a simple web services interface which you can use to store and retrieve or download any amount of data at any time from anywhere on the web. And finally, in addition to integration with most AWS services, Amazon S3 is supported by tens of thousands of consulting system integrator and independent software vendor partners. Now, where should S3 be used or what are the use cases where S3 is the prime solution? First, backup and recovery of virtually unlimited data of any type. Amazon S3 offers a highly durable, scalable and secure destination for backing up and archiving your critical data. You can use S3's versioning capability to provide even further protection of your stored data. It helps you optimize cost and performance while also meeting your recovery point objective and recovery time objectives. Amazon S3 and Amazon Glacier provide a range of storage classes to meet the needs of compliance archives for regulated industries or active archives for organizations who need fast, infrequent access to archive data. Amazon S3 can be used as your data lake for big data analytics. 
It helps you manage big data by reducing costs while simultaneously scaling to meet the high demands. It helps you build hybrid cloud storage, augmenting your existing local storage environment with the durability and scale of Amazon S3. S3 provides high performance, highly available storage that makes it easy to scale and maintain cost-effective mobile and internet-based apps that run very fast. With S3, you can add any amount of content and access it from anywhere so you can deploy applications faster and reach more customers. S3's highly durable, secure, global infrastructure offers a robust disaster recovery solution designed to provide superior data protection. These are some of the use cases where S3 would become a primary solution for your architecture. In the next, hi there. In this video, we are going to learn some of the fundamental concepts in S3. First, let us take a look at bucket. A bucket is basically a container which stores the objects that are uploaded to S3. So if a user wishes to store data or files such as images, videos, documents, spreadsheets, that is objects in S3, that user would first create a bucket in a region of their choice and then upload any number of objects. There will never be any object without a bucket. Even though the S3 service console allows you to create folders inside a bucket, there is no Windows Explorer like hierarchy. For example, in a bucket named MyVizBucket, which is in Ohio region, if you create a folder structure like VizLabs, AWS, Course, and put an object called VizLabs.png inside it, the URL of the object would become this. However, and this is very important, that this part is the actual name or the key of the object. So it is just the logical arrangement of the objects, not an actual hierarchy. You can also access the object using the alternate style of URL. Now, this URL may seem longer and difficult to comprehend, but don't worry. We are going to learn about all the components of this URL as we go along with this video. You can also configure a bucket such that Every time an object is added to it, Amazon S3 generates a unique version ID and assigns it to the object. We will be learning more about this later in the course. You can create buckets in any region you want, but to optimize the latency, minimize costs or address regulatory requirements, choose the AWS region that is geographically closer to you. For example, if your location is in UK, then creating the bucket in London or Ireland region would be more beneficial to you than creating it in any Asia Pacific regions. Now let us see what the objects in S3 are. Objects are the fundamental entities stored in Amazon S3. An object could be an image, audio or video file, a PDF or a Word document, an Excel sheet and so on. The objects consist of the object data itself and the metadata that is the data about the object data. By object storage, it means that S3 does not care about the data that is stored as an object. So S3 can never see the actual content inside your objects. And that's the most important point about object storage as compared to file storage. In object storage, such as S3, the service will not have the access to the content of the object it only can read the metadata associated with that object. As I mentioned, S3 does have access to the metadata that is the set of name value pairs that describes the object. For example, an object may have date last modified and standard HTTP metadata such as content type. You can also specify custom metadata at the time the object is stored. An important point to remember is that the objects belonging to a bucket that you create in a specific AWS region never leaves that region unless you explicitly transfer them to any other region. Now let us look at what endpoints are. An endpoint is a URL that is the entry point of a web service. Most Amazon web services offer a regional endpoint to make your requests to reduce data latency in your applications. For example, 
if the region is ohio that is us is 2 the endpoint for rest api for s3 service is s3 dot us hyphen east hyphen 2 dot amazon aws dot com or s3 hyphen us hyphen east hyphen 2 dot amazon aws dot com so in this url this part is the endpoint as we mentioned before every object has a key which is basically its name or its unique identifier within a bucket every object in a bucket has exactly one key so the combination of a bucket key and version id uniquely identifies each object in s3 every object in amazon s3 can be uniquely addressed through the combination of the web service endpoint bucket name key and optionally a version so in our example this part is the actual key of the object when you create a bucket you have to choose a region however you can access your buckets from any region and that is why when you go to the s3 service page in aws console you will see that no specific region would be selected at the top of the screen whenever you will be creating a bucket you will have to choose a region but you might want to choose the one that optimizes the latency minimizes cost or addresses the regulatory requirements objects stored in a region never leave the region unless you explicitly transfer them to another region and finally you can replicate the objects in one bucket in a region to another bucket in another region via cross region replication which we'll see in the upcoming videos now we come to one of the most important parts of s3 fundamentals the aws data consistency model for s3 data consistency model depicts how the results would be after certain operations such as puts gets deletes etc are done on the objects first s3 is an eventually consistent system before we see what eventually consistent means let us first understand what consistent means in this context being consistent in this context means that if a user performs an action a on an object the object should be in the most up-to-date or consistent state when another user performs an action b on it for example if a user changes a property of an object say the key of it from abc to xyz and another or even the same user reads the same property of that object in the next moment say within a second it should have the most up-to-date xyz value not the abc which is the old or stale value that is called as a consistent service eventually consistent means that in the same scenario when the user accesses the object in the next moment of time the value that is written may contain the stale value abc however it will eventually show the up-to-date value xyz after a minuscule delay hence the term eventually consistent i hope the difference is clear because it is very important that you understand this characteristic of s3 before we dive further into the other concepts now one might ask why is s3 eventually consistent well because as i mentioned earlier your data is automatically replicated across multiple servers and locations within a region so the changes in your data may take some time to propagate to all the locations as a result there are some situations where the information that you read immediately after an update may return the stale data let us quickly see the difference between eventually consistent read and consistent read eventually consistent read may have stale reads it might show you the lowest read latency and it will have highest read throughput whereas consistent read will not have any stale reads it will always show you the most up-to-date data it may have potential higher read latency and potential lower read throughput now that we know the difference between consistent and eventually consistent let us see where s3 is consistent and eventually consistent 
When the user do puts of the new objects in S3 bucket, S3 is read after write consistent. That is, if you create a new object and then do a read operation on it, the object will always be available and you will be able to access its properties. That means it will always give you the consistent result for a read whenever a new object is put or when a new object is uploaded to S3 bucket. Head or get to the object key name before creating the object. S3 is eventually read after write consistent. That is, if you make a head or get request to the key name to, let's say, if you want to find if the object exists before creating the object, Amazon S3 provides eventual consistency for read after write. When you do the overwrite puts, that is, the object already exists in S3, but you overwrote some properties onto it, S3 is eventually consistent in that situation. That is, if you overwrite, let's say, the key of an object and do an immediate read, you may still get the stale key back due to the eventual consistency. Similarly, when the user deletes an object from S3, S3 shows eventually consistent behavior. That is, if you delete an object and do an immediate read, you may still be able to access the object. But after a certain short period, the object will be eventually no longer be available. So for the exam, always remember that S3 is read after write consistent for new puts. However, for the overwrite puts, it is eventually consistent Similarly, for deletes as well, S3 is eventually consistent. Finally, Amazon S3 provides a REST that is representational state transfer and a SOAP that is simple object access protocol interface for bucket and objects management. The native interface for S3 is a REST API. Using REST, you use standard HTTP or HTTPS requests to create, fetch, and delete buckets and object. The REST API uses the standard HTTP headers and status codes so that standard browsers and toolkits work as expected. It maps standard HTTP methods such as put, get, delete, and post to create, read, delete, and update operations. Regarding SOAP, just remember that the support over HTTP is deprecated but it is still available over HTTPS. In this video, we will learn some of the basic but most important fundamental concepts in S3. First, we learned about what a bucket is. We also saw what objects and metadata are. We learned about endpoints, key of an S3 object, and region. Then we learned about S3 data consistency model, which is very, very important for the exam. And finally, we learned about REST and SOAP interface. I meant this REST and SOAP interface.